Welcome to Busy Books Discourse, brought to you by Busy Books. I'm Sonia Singh, and I'm a debut author. My debut actually comes out April 5th. It's called Sorry Not Sorry, and it's a rom-com. I'm actually joined by two other authors, and I'm going to throw it over to Sonia Lolly to start. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonia Lolly. I am a different Sonia. It's nice for me to, uh, to chat to another Sonia. Um, I am a romance and women's fiction author. Um, I live in Canada. And uh, my mo most recent book was A Holly Jolly Bivali, which was a holiday romance that centered around a woman uh, like me, like a lot of us who celebrate Christmas, but we also celebrate the volley. Um, I'm also going to be writing thrillers starting later this year under a very open pen name, SC Lolly. So that's a new adventure um, that I'm a little bit nervous about starting this year. And um, my first book, Are You Sarah, um, comes out in August. Amazing. And we also have Muncie Shaw. Hi, nice to chat with you both. Nice to meet two Sonyas uh, at the same time. Um, I am Monsi Shaw. Uh, I am the debut author of The Taste of Ginger, which came out January 1st um, and super excited about it. Uh, and it's a coming of age story. It's women's fiction. It's a coming of age story of a 30 year old woman who is born in India, moves to America when she's seven and returns to India as an adult and is trying to find her identity and balance her cultures, all without alienating her mother in the process. Okay, so I just love the fact that we are so unique in terms of just the timeline of how we became authors. And I think that's what we're going to focus on as we continue just chatting here and really trying to understand our unique voices as South Asian authors. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start with Sonia Lolly, and I'm saying Sonia Lolly because I'm Sonia Singh, mm -hmm. uh, just because you're, you know, I describe you as the OG. You're certainly, you've been around the block um, at least <laughs> more than myself and Muncie. And I think, you know, when we take a look at our personal journeys, which we'll get to in just a moment, we can compare what the worlds have been like, whether it was, you know, five, 10 years ago versus what's going on with diversity and voices with South Asian authors. And I just wanted to chat with you about your progress and what it was like for you to query and if you happen to get any any rejection letters. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I think like a lot of us, I was always a writer, big reader. Um, I wrote, so my first book, The Matchmaker's List, um, that wasn't the first book I wrote. I started out by writing really random books, but really random subjects that had nothing to do with my lived experience. And I think that I didn't really um, connect with the fact that um, I had I could write a book about my own experience being um, Indian Canadian or Indian North American um, because I didn't really feel that Indian and so I didn't know what to write about so actually one of my books that is locked in a share locked in a folder that I will never never touch again uh, was about a woman who um, I made her ethnically ambiguous because I didn't, I didn't really know how to even grapple with that, you know, and I, and I totally left her culture and her background and her family out of it, uh, which didn't really uh, connect with me. And then I had a uh, creative writing mentor who kind of said, you know, this isn't really real. It's not full. You should write about what you know. And that's when I started writing the matchmakers list. And so that was probably in like 2015, I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. At the time I was living in the UK and um, I was working, um, studying, and then I was working as a legal journalist there all the while uh, writing. And then I was querying. And um, I was querying like UK agents. I was uh, querying Canadian agents, US agents. Got a lot of rejection letters. Uh, back then, and especially in the UK, um, there weren't a lot of diverse, there wasn't a lot of diversity, mm -hmm. especially in romance um, and romance women's fiction. And so it was just like a completely different landscape. Um, I don't know if I can pinpoint, and I think a lot of the rejections was just that I queried way too soon and it was like a rough first draft and I should have waited. And I think that's what a lot of people do. Um, but eventually I did found an agent who was a more junior agent at the time. Um, this was my old agent. And she really, really worked with me and mm -hmm. edited that book with me for nearly a year um, over and over again. Because I was so new. I was so rough. And I was so lucky to find somebody who really like believed in me and gave mm -hmm. me that attention. Um, so my book actually got published in the UK first in 2017 um, by a different publisher. It was called The Arrangement, different cover. Um, and then I actually moved back to Canada. And then that's when my um, current agent uh, sold the book to Berkeley for North, for North America. 
And so then, it, it, then the process happened all over again for the exact same book, a slightly better version. Um, and that was um, the matchmakers list. And so, and then I've been publishing with Berkeley since then. And it's been, it's been largely, largely positive. I think I've been very lucky to have a good experience with that. Yeah, you know, just hearing your story, things moved fairly quickly, but at the same time, you still had the ebbs and flows where Muncie shares a little bit about your story because it took almost a decade, if not slightly over, for you to get to this point where Taste of Ginger came out, but you almost threw in the towel. Isn't that correct? So, yeah, so my journey started um, in 2009. I started writing The Taste of Ginger. Um, I'd been working as a lawyer and I told myself I was going to take one year and I was going to write because my dream had always been to write. So I took one year off. It was the middle of the recession. It was easy to not be working. And so I took that year. I took a bunch of writing classes um, at UCLA, which uh, I'm fortunate to live in Los Angeles and so had that accessible because we have some of the best writers in the world right here. Um, and so I took a ton of classes and I started querying probably in 2010, I think, 2010, maybe, maybe early 2011. And the querying process went okay for me. I think the query letter got a lot of bites. And so I ended up getting offers fairly quickly for an agent uh, in that first round. And so then I found an agent who I felt like I was punching above my weight class team <laughs> for talking to me. Um, and so um, I worked with her on a couple revisions, but we never got to the submission process. It probably took 18 months or so. And so then I was without an agent and had my book that we'd never submitted. Um, and so I started writing another book, um, which, you know, just to switch gears, because it, it seemed like maybe it wasn't this story, it wasn't the right time for the story of The Taste of Ginger is a very authentic look at cultural differences and doesn't really hold back <laughs> um, in, in terms of the ideas and concepts that are being conveyed there. And so I started writing a second book thinking, okay, maybe it'll be easier to do something else. Um, and then, you know, with as much time it passes, I was changing jobs at points. And so I, I, I returned in-house as an entertainment lawyer and I had a little bit of time. And so I dusted off the taste of ginger and said, I really just feel like this should be a book people will read at some point. It's been so many years. So I started the agent process again. Um, and I found the agent that I'm currently with in 2017, I think, and I worked with her, um, on a on another revision and then we um we started doing submissions so it was my first time doing submission which was super exciting um and then that's when we started getting so many of the rejections that were along the lines of someone had just signed another indian author to their list or they had just you know recently put out a south asian book um and so it wasn't the right time or it wasn't the right fit but i wasn't getting critiques about the writing or the voice or the story. I was getting critiques about something that was outside of my control. Um, so we, we went through that process and we were going to focus on my second book and shelve the taste of ginger after we got 50 or 60 likes, but don't loves. Um, and then it's, it's a, it's a, weird turn of events. Uh, the editor that I currently have had rejected my book in March 2019. Uh, she had said she would look at it um, if I revised it. And I talked to my agent and we just said, let's focus on the second book, um, which seems to be in line with the feedback that I'm getting. And then as we all know, 2020 was an interesting year. We had the pandemic, we had a racial reckoning with Black people, Asian people, just all types of people of color. And my editor came back and said, is that project still available? And signed me on a two book deal. Wow. That's really great. <laughs> but yeah, that's an amazing story. And just imagine, you know, you're chatting about not giving up because you're also working full time and you were taking these classes and you're querying and agents are dropping like flies and you're, you never gave up, which is so amazing. Um, I think for me, 
there's a mixture of both your stories. And although, you know, and I'm very sensitive to authors and um, those authors who still have yet to find an agent where things happened a little bit more quickly for me. Um, it took about a year and, you know, I finished the book in about four months. I actually remember writing 40,000 words in four days, believe it or not. It was just so insane. And, and not that those words are, you know, they definitely needed to be edited, that's for sure. But um, I ended up sending out my query to a couple of agents. And at that point, the agents were coming back to me and Another South Asian author uh, who's very well known was coming out with her first rom-com. And she was, you know, always writing YA books and she was coming out with her first rom-com. And as soon as, you know, anybody found out about that, it was just, no, there's not enough space to have two rom-com authors that are South Asian coming out in the same year. And I was just so disheartened and actually really broken up about that. But at the same time, that made me feel a little bit more competitive. And certainly after Simon and Schuster decided to move ahead with the project, which I'm so glad that I landed there because, you know, they're, they've been so, so pushing the fact that they're okay with me telling my story as a South Asian woman, not just in the book, but also as a person. And I have really, really loved the fact that they've allowed me to share some of my Indian stories, whether it's the traditions of growing up in an Indian household, having Indian friends, or, you know, some of the, the places that I've been in as an Indian woman that have not been so great. And I really wanted to land with a publisher like that. Um, but just sort of stepping back and talking about our journeys, I think something else that's popped up is being in this space of having unique South Asian voices. And Sonia, you touched on this a little bit with your initial book that never came out. But did you always know that your that your protagonist, your protagonist was going to be a female lead that is Indian? Um, no, and I, I didn't. I think that before when I was writing in my 20s, in my early, early, early to mid twenties, initially, it was, um, I just wanted to write whatever I felt like. I didn't think about the market. I didn't, I didn't work in publishing mm -hmm. at the time. I didn't really think about genre or what, what I wanted to write or what the cover would look like or who, like how the publisher would make it saleable. Um, so mm -hmm. I only started thinking about that much later. And I was kind of lucky that when I started writing the matchmakers list, it kind of aligned into a rom-com in a space that like, whether it was subconscious or not, I'm not sure, but I, I, I love rom-coms and it became a rom-com. And then my editors helped me like mold it a little bit better. And I think yeah. that as soon as I accepted and as soon as I realized that it was okay to talk about, you know, my unique experiences, not unique experiences, mm -hmm. sorry, just ex experiences that I hadn't really seen represented that I thought, okay, I could be Indian or I had to be mm -hmm. North American. I didn't realize it could be both, right? So um, as soon as I accepted that, it was really, really easy to just, keep writing and letting it, letting it flow. I think there's a huge, you know, and I think a lot of people probably struggle with this of feeling like not South Asian enough, right. Or, yeah. or too South Asian or what will, what will white people think if I don't explain what this term means or all these things. Um, and eventually I just kind of let go of that and just said, okay, this is, this is what it is. Some people are going to think it's not authentic. Some people are think it's like way too basic, but um, I just, if, if I write authentically to myself, that's all I can do. And I can't control how it lands with people. I just have to do my best. Right. So that's been a journey as well. And what about with you, Muncie? Did you always have in your mind that you were going to write at the point of view of a busy woman? I, I did. Um, I, it didn't occur to me to ever write from any other POV. Um, but I think that is sort of going to what Sonia Lali was saying that it's it's what I felt was missing in the industry because I was a voracious mm -hmm. reader as a kid. And by the time I started writing The Taste of Ginger in 2009, I could literally count on my fingers on one hand the number of books I had read mm -hmm. that featured South, e mm -hmm. South Asian characters. And, I, and there were zero that featured Gujarati characters. So I think there's also this assumption that oh, all Indian people are the same. And I think we all know just from here, I, I, you know, I often consider it like Europe, you know, you wouldn't say France and Spain are the same. Um, mm -hmm. And the different states have different food and different customs and clothing and traditions. And so I had never read a book um, that featured Gujarati families, which is what I knew. And I think all the different cultures are very different and we need representation in all of them. And so I knew that was 
the story I was going to write, I was also writing this, I was working in Hollywood. And so I was getting this firsthand look at the types of stories that were being told on mass, and they weren't these types of stories. And so for me, I think it was never a question. That's, that's what I was going to do, because that's what I thought was needed. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when you just uh, talked about Hollywood, I, I wasn't trying to write for Hollywood, you know, I never really wanted to do that. And I never wanted to lean in on that. It's funny, because when I wrote Sorry, Not Sorry, I had one of my best friends who's from Newfoundland, and she read the first 10 chapters. And she said to me that she didn't realize that Manny was Indian, you know, she had no idea the whole time she thought she was this Caucasian girl. And I thought to me that that's exactly what I wanted someone to read and think about as my protagonist. Although I will tell you, I had a very difficult time with, as you can see, my book is in the back. Um, when, you know, Simon and Schuster came up with the cover, I was just like fist down. What, like, we can't put an Indian woman on a cover with a sari, like no one's gonna buy it. And, you know, only the Indian demographic is gonna purchase my book. So it had to, like, I had to step back and really understand that, those are thoughts that I have from a child, like to my childhood, you know, being pigeonholed into spaces, thinking that if I dressed a certain way, I looked a certain way, I spoke a certain way, or I spoke about my experiences, that they could only be relatable to other Indian women. And that's who I thought would pick up my book, which by far is not the truth. You know, oftentimes you're reading reviews and people that are um, commenting and DMing just about your book, and they're not Indian at all. And so that's sort of the the respect I wanted to have for my characters, which is interesting, which is what both of you have also said as well. Um, all three of us actually met on social media. And I know that you and Sonia Muncy are meeting for the first time. I actually reached out to Sonia Lolly, oh, I want to say over a year ago. And Muncy and I, I can't even remember, but we somehow connected on Instagram. You know, I think we slid into each other's DMs and felt the whole situation out. I might have sent an emoji, but um, certainly social media has been really important for me in terms of being able to find other authors in this space, especially as a debut author who needs to lean a little bit more on the support, uh, when it certainly not, has not been there for me. So I wanted to also chat with you guys about social media because it literally, like Muncie knows this, it's the bane of my existence and to have to try to put so much effort into your author page, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it just, it's literally another full-time job, which you cannot seem to do on top of your other full-time job and um, writing and the many other things you have to do as an author. And so I struggled with that for a while until probably about a couple of months ago, where I just have given up on trying to please people. And I've realized that no matter what I do, the needle is not going to move far enough um, on my social media page to bring me to the New York Times bestseller list or, you know, bring in boxes of sales. And I think that I've gotten to a peaceful place now where social media does not represent me in terms of book sales. And that took quite a while. So I wanted to maybe I'll start with you, Muncie, because I, I know a little bit about your attitude towards <laughs> social media. How are you grasping um, the whole idea of putting your book out there and having to update on a regular basis or have you just decided to back off of it as well? Um, I, I think you and I landed at similar <laughs> places. Um, so I'm the person who before this book deal, I was not on social media. And so I had to create accounts <laughs> um, to, to do all the book publicity stuff because I knew that was important. Um, but I mean, frankly, I'm not good at it. It's a skill set. Creating content for social media is a very unique skill set. And it's not how I like to spend my time. I'm not great at it. Um, I think the best thing that's come out of it has been meeting other authors and mm -hmm. having readers who've reached out since my book's been out for two months now, just having messages from readers. Those are great. But I've I've also learned in the short time that my book's been out in the world, like what you said, Sonia, I cannot move the needle the way my publisher can on any sale. So me sitting there spending three hours making this perfect reel is not going to do anything. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I may get some views, um, but 
I, you, you know, there's 24 hours in the day. I still work full time at a day job. And I, you know, I want to be writing my third book and doing, you know, dealing with other stuff for the second book and, and obviously for the taste of ginger and there's just not enough time. And so I've backed off and I said, I'm going to use it for the purpose I like, which is connecting with other authors and with readers. And honestly, I get a ton of great book recommendations from there. Like the number of <laughs> South Asian books that are coming out now, like who thought we'd be at a place where there's too many for me to read when you went from there'd be one every 10 years and it was right. fine. But now that's like, I've got a TBR list just full of South Asian books um, that I'm trying to get through. So that's, that's the piece I've made uh, with that world so far. I love it. I mean, I think that's just a great attitude to have. Um, Sonia Lolly, I mean, how do you feel about social media? I know that out of the three of us, you tend to be a little bit quieter on social media. Is that something that you've consciously decided to do? Um, honestly, it's because I'm don't really like it, and I'm a little too. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we're like like you guys. I'm I'm busy, and it's it's been hard. And I think that whole idea of like you know what is the purpose of me posting this, like and coming to that realization, like that you guys both said, like it's not about book sales. It's really so, and so and so. I've never used social media um, that assertively, I guess. I think um, for me, it's uh, just about, um, you know, I, I post some be okay. Like I haven't posted in a long time because I've been on deadline, but like, um, you know, I post pictures of my dog. I post pictures, um, you know, you know, a little bit more in the lead up to my books. You know, if when I remember and I, I'm, I'm terrible at this, but when I read a great book, I, I post about that to my story, you know, like it's, it's not something that I, I just use it as a sort of reflection of myself. And I think the biggest thing for me um, in like trying to understand social media and, and how I wanted to use it was that I wanted to, um, ref I, I didn't want to, I wanted to come off across as myself and not, and I wanted to be authentic. And I, and I felt like there were a few times in the past where I'm like, this doesn't really, this feels fake, you know, and if mm -hmm. it feels fake to me, it's going to seem fake to someone else. And so for mm -hmm. me, I'm like, okay, what social media for me, it's going to be, I'm not going to be too beat up, beat myself up about it. I'm just going to be there and it's a way to connect like you guys said with authors and with readers and to you know doom scroll you know when you're in bed and can't fall yeah. asleep of course yeah you know i almost felt like it, social media that character that you see on social media when you come to my instagram it does not represent me and i always go back to beyonce having you know various versions of herself and i feel like when i'm on that platform yes do i really need to do an Instagram story or a reel to the top trending music that's going to bring me in more followers, but again, doesn't translate to sales. So why have I wasted half a day trying to put a three second reel together? It just was exasperating and got to the point where it was stressing me out too much. And again, I've just decided that it doesn't represent myself or the work that I want to do. So I think I'm in the same boat as you guys. So at yeah. least we were able to connect, which I think is really important. Um, and one of the other questions I wanted to ask you guys, you know, obviously, this is a very strong uh, group of South Asian women. I'm so impressed by everything that you've done, Sonia, really to the point where I've been following your career for so long. And um, <laughs> I actually almost thought for a second, you know, should I even change my name? And this is before when I was really starting to put my work out there because this competitive nature started to really boil up in me. And that came from querying and that came from agents rejecting me based on the fact that there were other South Asian authors out there. And so when I came across your work way before um, I even considered being an author, and then I realized that my dream was coming true, I almost thought about changing my name because of the confusion. And I wonder, you know, a question that I want to ask you about being in this space, have you felt that it's been competitive with other South Asian women based on sort of what we're fed um, and not necessarily being able to champion and cheerlead each other? Because you've actually done the opposite for me, which is, you know, cheerleaded me and championed me for a book that you haven't even read. So I just wanted to get your take on that. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. It's, and it's very, very complicated because obviously we're like, we're good people, but of course we're also like ambitious and creative. And so there's all these like mixed emotions all the time. And I think for me, I've had like a largely positive experience. Um, I haven't become super close um, with a lot of authors, but mostly because, not because I don't like like them, it's because, you know, everyone's, everyone's busy. We only have so much bandwidth. Um, but I guess the whole competitive thing, really, like, you know, if we think about, you know, um, the whole thing about, you know, women rising to the top as executives and often, especially before the competitive nature between women, especially because, 
you know, if we we'll re- we know realistically the board is only going to have one executive that's a woman, the women feel then that we're they're competing with other women rather than trying to change the whole space and say, no, if we see another woman exceed, succeed, that's also a success for us because it gives us a better chance. So I think I've really, you know, it's not always easy, but I've really tried to have that mentality where, you know, a success for another South Asian author is also a success for me because we're not competing with each other. We're, we're trying to change the game. So it doesn't matter if two South Asian books come out on the same day, you know, like it, it doesn't mean that they're not going to both get coverage. I mean, unfortunately it kind of does sometimes mean that, right. And the realities are that things take slow are slow to change. And even though there's a lot of really good intentioned people in working in publishing and the book industry, trying to change things, um, you know, not just BIPOC people, but also like, you know, white people, um, it, the realities can make things confusing and hard on a day-to-day basis. And so while I sound like I'm very wise, it's not always like, I don't always feel this, but I do try and think of it like we are in this together and like someone else succeeding is also my success too, because it means that I have a better chance too. You know what I mean? So it's about, yeah, I I try and have that mentality. I, I, I love that attitude because I'm just going to say something here and I'll get Muncie to comment on it in a minute, but I have not had that experience. So with me, when I've reached out to other South Asian authors outside of you two, which responded really quickly, and actually I've been really able to develop a strong friendship with Muncie, um, I have had to lean on Caucasian authors. So I have found that the um, Emily Giffins or the um, Emily Henry's, Samantha Bailey's have actually supported me a lot more than a South Asian author, which you know, really set me back because I felt that I shouldn't be doing that then to somebody else. And with Muncie, when we met, you know, I think in a span of 24 hours, we were sharing a lot of like secrets, you know, normally you would sign off on an NDA and we were just like going at each other, you know, like this, 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 and this, because genuinely trying to help each other out. And I really love that relationship. And I actually think it was so important for me to get out of that rabbit hole that I was spinning out of control of thinking that every South Asian author that I came across was out to get me. And so thank you, Muncie, for that. But um, how, how has it been for you now that your book is out and your your author, you know, your author roster has increased? Have you been leaning towards specifically making um, industry friends that look like you, or you're just, you know, this is a support you're getting and that's what you're happy with. Uh, it's, it's such an interesting question. And I think I both, both in my writing world and in my day job before this, I have always subscribed in the mentality that a rising tide lifts all ships. And so I, I have done that, you know, as, as a lawyer by day, I'm very, very cognizant of, you know, hiring junior attorneys who are women of color um, Mm -hmm. and just really focusing on that. That's sort of always been a a life mission for me. And so with writing, I knew it wasn't going to be any different. Um, So I tend to like, I, I, this is also because this is what I read. I tend to promote more books by authors of color because that's what I'm focused on reading. Because for the first time in my life, there are enough books in that Mm -hmm. genre that I can read exclusively that if I want to. Um, But so for me, that was always a goal with my writing was to, um, and going back to something Sonia Lali said, was to just be very authentic in this part Mm -hmm. of my life. Because I think we've all just growing up in North America as South Asians, I think we've all had to put on masks in different places. And for me, I said, in this area of your life, everything is going to be authentic and helping other people, whoever they are, is very much my core and my center. So when, when I started chatting with you, it was seamless, right? It was, of course, we're just going to help each other. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there was never any discussion any other way. And I've definitely had, I don't know that I'm specifically seeking out certain people, but I have found like my, um, I've got a, I've got a small group of, uh, debut authors all from the same publisher. And so that is like my ride or die group (laughs) and, you know, like we're chatting every day and, you know, it's a mix of people in that, in that group, but there's seven of us. And those are the people I'm going to go to bat for. And none of us have met in real life. We all (laughs) met through social media, essentially. (laughs) Um, actually I take that back to, but, uh, three of us have now met in real life. Um, but at the time, so I think for me, that is, that's always been the focus and I wasn't going to 
I just was never going to waver from that because at the end of the day, I want a successful writing career and it's super important to me. But for me, the message of my mm-hmm. writing com- career is more important than the sales. Yeah. And that's how I felt when, you know, I had this opportunity to pop up with Dissy books. I didn't think of any other Dissies, by the way, you two were my go-to. So if you both had bailed then we would have had a problem, but really <laughs> these are the two people that I genuinely feel like I want to be there as you said, Muncie, as my ride or die, as our books continue to flourish. And so it's really important for me. And so I thank you for that. Um, I know we're closing out on our half hour here, but I, I thought we'd like switch things up a bit. So I was going to play a little bit of like, would you rather? So, and this is all related to book stuff. So it's not going to be like, you know, would you be rather stranded on an island with like Ryan Gosling or Ryan Reynolds? I won't, I won't <laughs> go down that road. Um, okay. So would you, I'll start with Muncie. Would you rather be known for your words or would you rather be known for your stories? Stories. How about you, Sonia Lally? Stories. Yeah. How about you? Stories. Yeah, I yeah. said stories too. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Great. Um, would you rather write books for sales or would you rather write books for yourself? I think I know the answer to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Self, yeah. For yourself. For yourself. Okay, good. Um, would you rather write books for people to talk about or would you rather write books for people to talk about you? Talk about. Talk about, yeah. Okay, so I said talk about me, but me because I really wanted to tell more South Asian stories and not like about me living at home with my dog and what I do all day. But it was just more like, hey, this is how I grew up and then add on to my story of my book. But I just think I'm in a place right now where, and I'm going to ask you guys, this is our last question. It's the first time, you know, I'm a 40 year old woman that I've ever felt so proud to be Indian. And it took, I would say, 15 plus years to get to this point and 90% of it has to do with putting this story out there this rom-com out there and just all the support that I've received but I was in a place years ago where it felt to me at least that I was embarrassed of my culture the way that I looked and I feel like in that space I've grown up a lot and really want to support not just authors but anybody in the creative space that tends to be South Asian so I just wanted to I'll start with Muncie how do you feel about being this strong independent uh South Asian woman in this space in 2022? I love it I feel I feel the same as you I feel like more comfortable and confident in my own skin right now and part of it is you know you put your words out into the world and it's scary you know, it's, it's a terrifying thing, especially for, for the type of book that I have written in The Taste of Ginger. I knew it was going to be controversial <laughs> and to some people. And so I did that, you know, eyes wide open. And for me, just the reception I've gotten to it has just floored me. Like I could not have imagined that this is where I would be two months out from publication. Um, But I think just having this book and so many other books, it's making, it's making the process of being different or unique easier for everyone. I think whether, whether you're a person of color or if you're white, I think white people are getting exposure to more things from people of color. So I'm getting people asking me for the first time in my life to eat Gujarati food <laughs> and, and learning for the first time that the Indian restaurants you go to only serve food from one region of India. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, I just think that now is, now is definitely the time that I feel the best in terms of who I am. I love it. How about you, Sonia? Yeah, I feel like, and we, you talked about, um, you know, we all wear different masks and I felt like, you know, definitely there's like the more Indian side of me. And then there was the side of that grew up in Saskatoon when I was the only person of color in my class or my school or that kind of thing. Right. And, mm-hmm. and so I, I've always felt like I've, ha- I've, I've been happy with who I am and I, you know, with my family and my culture. And, um, I was never really embarrassed about it because I just, those things were just so separate. And now I don't feel that those things are separate that I feel. And a part of that is just the time, t- times of change that I'm, you know, growing older, more confidence, care less about what people think about me. Although that's still something, you know, we all work on constantly. Um, but yeah, I, d- I do feel like I've grown into myself and I've been able to merge those things and I don't have to keep, you know, the, the brown side of myself separate mm-hmm. from the part that I present to our, you know, 
North American society. I love it. This was such a great discussion. I'm so glad that we were able to take this time to chat. Thank you so much, ladies. You can get Taste of Ginger out now by Muncie Shaw. Sonia Lolly, I'm so looking forward to reading your new thriller. Of course, Holly Jolly Diwali is out now too. And Sorry Not Sorry comes out on April the 5th. Thank you, ladies. I'm looking forward to having a drink with you possibly when we can in person. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. This was great.